What's up, guys? Welcome to the first ever episode 234 of the Kind of Funny Games cast. Each and every week, I consider getting rid of the number altogether. <laughs> oh, why? <laughs> uh, just because like, I feel like we get to, like, once Doesn't you get to matter this, anymore? Yeah, things have changed. You know what I mean? Like, recently we got rid of the number for Internet Explorers and for KFAF. And that makes sense because those are just more like, the I don't data. want anyone to be intimidated on jumping in. Sure. You know, it's like, for those shows, definitely, it's all kind of like, you can come in any time. I mean, there's a it's date and they're fun. organized, right? When yeah, you that's go the to, thing. It's like, like, you can still do anywhere. upload date. You can still do do any of that stuff. Like, there still would be a number associated with it. It just wouldn't necessarily have to be called out. I'm with you in terms of sentiment. Mm -hmm. I think there will be a major, like, lashback if you do it. Oh, yeah. No, I you understand. Last change in general. Let's change yeah, yeah, yeah. in general. <laughs> that, that's the thing is, like, with the Kind of Funny Podcast and Gamescast, I've kept the numbers forever. Because yeah. it's like, Games Daily is not numbered. It's dated. Because that makes more sense for a daily news show. You know sure what does. I mean? mm -hmm. But for this, I don't know. I've been thinking because 234, how many people are not listening to this because they're like, Ugh, I don't want to jump on now. Interesting. You know what I mean? It's like comic book. I see what you, you mean. Want, you want that one. Maybe we'll just right. start over at some I point. Feel like people should the know. The all new kind of funny games cast. It's not just like it, it's yeah. a number yeah. one. Just do yeah. volume. Yeah, reboot it. Yeah. Well, yeah. anyway, this is the first season. Games cast, volume two. I mean, this would be a great spot to end it on. Just right now. Three, four. Like the day. numbers are in, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then just snap, it's done. Now, from here on out, it's just the kind of funny games cast with whatever the headline is. I don't know. Let us know in the comments below what uh, you would do if you were what me. What would your reaction be? <laughs> <laughs> if you're in a podcast, you got to come over, leave a YouTube comment. Leave those comments, yeah. man. I'm Tim Geddes. This is Fran Mirabella the third, aka FM3 underscore on Twitch. Love you the underscore. Fran Fridays, you do all that stuff. It's great. Yes, sir. How's the Twitch been going? Good, man. Yeah. Have you replaced Nedji yet? I know, but like, like I said, he left a good 14 million behind. I'm just trying to pick up Get a little bit of one that. One by one. Stay yeah. One by one. That's how yeah. we do it. I heard there was a video of you that they played on his channel. What? No. Wait, you really? Lying. The little scary one. <laughs> what? Are you banging that? What is he Wait, talking about? He's talking about the porn video I believe on Ninja's the word thing. was railed. Oh, I see. That was a railed. good joke. Railed, railed. was the word. Railed. 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 That was me in the video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was just that's just railing my... this lady. And that's yeah, why yeah, yeah. you should follow and subscribe to my channel on Twitch <laughs> if you want to see more of that. There you go. And then Jesus. the busiest lady Thanks. in the business, Andrea Renee. What's How good, you doing? Tim? Many things are good, especially this iced coffee right now. I'm, Let me tell I'm you, it's jealous. hot. I am it's I real can, hot. I could go a for a nice sip? coffee, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why didn't you bring me one? You know? Did you got any uh, sugar-free vanilla in there, Tim? Any? Nah, no. Do you hear that's that? How he's I do. not thinking about you. Sugar-free hazelnut. He's not a thoughtful like. person. I'm not. I'm, I know. We all knew that. Yeah, that's he's true. busy. But my good friend Andy could go fill a giant mug with ice and give me some iced coffee, couldn't he? Doubtful. Yeah. What kind of mug? <laughs> Give me one of these uh, kind of funny mugs you can find on kindoffunny.com slash store. And you want coffee in there as well? Yeah. Well, what do I do with the coffee? You, what? You, what? you just brew it put, over the ice. So take the big mug and you put yeah. a bunch of ice in there. Then you slide in the Keurig. Then you put the pod in. Then you hit the button that says iced. Is it going to melt the coffee? Comes, yes, sli well, slightly. Yeah, slightly. Exactly. But, it's watery. But if you put yeah, more you. ice in than coffee, <laughs> it'll work out. See, that's why... I'm with you. That's iced coffee. That ice iced coffee. Iced hey, coffee with again, ice. again, though, when your friend and partner just fucking forgets you. You right. knew this is E3 levels of hot. I didn't. I wasn't here this morning. Yeah. I was, oh, I didn't realize Tim Geddes got hit in the head with a giant rock last <laughs> night. Woke up, forgot everything it was like. The living nightmare it was covering E3 in this hot box. But I didn't know it was hot like that. What? You, what, during, you, you during look during out? E3, it wasn't no, during it was E3, I didn't know that this was E3. Like <laughs> He just is saying it's as hot as it was then. I understand that. I didn't know that. How so did I, you not? You were saying you live here. You walked outside. Hot, it's so hot outside. Doesn't the coffee get watered down? Gentlemen, gentlemen. Gentlemen. Andy, on sheer principle, you should make it. I feel like this is easily rectifiable by Tim just asking Siri when he wakes up, hey Siri, what's the weather like this morning? It's San Francisco. The weather's going to be 10 different weathers at once oh, at all times. You actually need to set a timer that you know what I mean? asks him. You know what happened to me here's today? The, I was walking no, that's through the true, park. Though. I was walking through the park playing Pokemon Go and I was like, ooh, going to be a hot one today. I knew <laughs> by being outside and the fucking seeing the sun. I was outside all day. It's not bad. It's not the I'm, weather. I'm going outside. I'm going to see what it's like. <laughs> you're, you're already hot. It's hot in here. It's going to make you hotter. I right? get what Don't you're saying, it. though, Tim, because the, no, the weather, the weather outside app. Outside is actually nice because you can get a full breeze. The problem mm, is we don't have enough airflow in out. the studio, and we're underneath these lights that yeah. make it warmer. You're but but I get your point. You're going to stand there with a straight face <laughs> and tell me standing out in the sun, you don't know it's going to be hot in this greenhouse of a studio. I don't know. I was chilling. No, I, I, I get, I get your point, though. The weather app now. only takes like from one specific part of the city. So he's you don't dangerous. know what the sunset's going to be like. You don't know what the Richmond's going to be like. Now, but it's you true. do They're know taken from downtown. what the studio is going to be like if the sun is shining, regardless of it's, if it's hot or not. Mm -hmm. Y'all tripping your zip balls right now. Code. It is not that you hot. Set your zip code. Code. 
in your in your Google Home, your Siri, your whatever. She doesn't go. Oh, I don't know. What, SF, let me take it from fucking downtown. That's what they do. No, this is the kind knows. of funny games. Siri doesn't know shit, dude. She fucking knows it. Well, it you I was in Daly City, which supposed to be hotter than here, and it wasn't. Y'all got the heat crazies. Can we do the show? <laughs> this is kind of funny. Games cast no, each don't. and every week right here on YouTube.com slash kind of funny games. We get together, talk about video games, all the things that we love about them. And the heat is making us all goddamn crazy. Craig's rolling his pants up. They're so tight. You're oh, also, maybe it is hot, because Frank, can you, can you stand up and give the people a little twirl? <laughs> Why? Because wearing shorts? Yeah. Why? I don't no, wear shorts. They're not just shorts. They're cut off. Yeah, we can't. No, they're, get in the front. They're clearly they're wearing the show. pants. They clearly no, were they pants at one point. They and then they were cut like, off. Yeah, did you cut them yourself or is that a... No, they come that way. Okay. They're very expensive <laughs> <laughs> to have somebody else cut them in half. <laughs> this is, and I want to point out, not to you. Now nah, I'm no longer <laughs> yelling at you, Tim. I'm yelling at Fran. Fran, of course, the one man who watched... Uh, geez, knocking boots with Ryan Keeley on the IGN set years oh ago my. and watched it and went, turned to us and goes, none of you are allowed to wear shorts on camera ever again. <laughs> <We're> like, <"Okay." laughs> but see, mine are under the desk. See, I'm, I'm, I'm adhering to my own rule. Jesus fucking True story. Christ. This is the kind of funny games cast. We talk about video games, blah, blah, blah. What episode you, is it? This is 234. <laughs> you can get the show early for some godforsaken reason by going to <laughs> patreon.com slash kind of funny games. And also, you can uh, be a Patreon producer like Tom Bach or James Hastings. Woo -woo. Uh, you also can get the show ad free and get the pre and post shows. Um, that's the real draw, I would say. A yes. lot of content, a lot of real content. quality content. content. You want to um, watch Greg and I eat pizza. That was a, yeah. a, a mukbang. Oh wait, what? A mukbang. Mukbang? mukbang. You know when you watch people eat. You don't know that term. It's uh, I think it's Korean, right? Where you just watch people eat food. It's very popular. I, friend. Um, so <laughs> oh, this. Oh no! I no, said this no, a million times. no! You can also get this as a video on YouTube or roosterteeth.com or audio. Just search for kind of funny games cast on your favorite podcast service. Around. You killed it, Andy. Great job. Thank you. Thanks. That's how you do it. Uh, we're brought to you by Quip and Upstart today, but we'll tell you all about that later. Uh, now I want to tell you about a whole bunch of embargoed games, right, Greg? Yeah. What bullshit you got for me today? Wait. Oh, Wait, are we, yeah. are we oh, no, 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 you no, your no, quick no. segment. Yeah, like, no, no. You can leave it. It's not. It's not. Yeah, this isn't the new part. Oh, okay, okay. No, okay. my quick segment is. I feel you know. I, I hate it when you hit me up mm -hmm. and you say, "What have you been playing, Greg?" We're gonna talk about games you've been playing, and I'm like, "Here are the same games I've been playing since last week. I'm addicted to them. Whatever. I've been playing a whole bunch of cool shit. I'm embargoed at the wazoo on so many things. Ugh. So and none of them line up for this show or even Monday's posting." So I got I have other I have things to talk about Borderlands three, Sega, but nothing of the big stuff to talk about. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. I just next to, week I just wanted to complain about that. Probably. Next week I think one or two of them is up. Yet. Yeah, okay. it's exciting stuff. Yeah. But I have an embargo game that I can talk about, but you guys just can't hear about it until tomorrow morning. The people watching live, games cast, people watching live. live. Yeah, because if we were recording on Thursdays like we normally do, we'd be totally right. in the clear. So most people but, listen. So if you're watching live, I'm Go sorry, ahead. but for the next I don't know probably ten minutes. It's gonna be muted. I mean, kind of funny time. That means we'll, we'll, we'll wave when it's over. I, I don't think it's gonna be that long. It's, it's gonna, gonna be, be that long. all right. I'm muting. There's, no, the, there's nothing they need to do. But live that? people are getting muted right now. Oh no! I, just just in case they muted on top of it for some god. Oh wow! Reason. Okay, wow. That'd just, be interesting. That'd be weird, but you never know. The double realize. redundancy. Right. Producer, yeah. double yeah. redundancy. I'm muting the stream, and then I just want to double check. Yep. Let's let's take a minute over here so I can just double check over here that the oh, audio good, is just gone. Yeah, no, we, we'd so, rather be uh, safe than sorry when yeah. we talk about Death Stranding. Yeah, exactly. So uh, <laughs> I love, just just yourself. Yourself. run that into the ground like in the future. Even well. long like, after we comes out, Death Stranding, we need to still say every time we do this, "Hey, man, that's Death Stranding." Death Stranding, man. That's how it is. Ooh, you know man. what I mean? What a playthrough. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought it? Norman Reedus was the baby all along. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Clip that out if it's right. If it turns out that's how Amuse it yourselves for okay. a little bit. Oh, no, more. We, we've more been amusement. Well, it's because it's YouTube. It's a hell of a delay. I'm really excited to talk about a game later, Fran. Rebel Galaxy Outlaw. Yes. A game I was uh, jokingly talking shit about and making fun of on Games you Daily. You were? And the developer was, was in, chat? Uh, in the chat. <laughs> and you're Send wrong. Send it out. You're wrong. Yeah. Uh, that's that's awesome. Awesome. All right. We're good oh, to go. We're that. good to go. This is yeah. Barrett. All right. I want to talk about Astral Chain. Ooh, oh, new game I didn't from know Platinum this. Games, uh, Nintendo Switch exclusive, published by Nintendo. They're kind of treating this as if it's you know an exclusive mm -hmm. to them, like one of their big kind of tentpole games, like Marvel yeah. Ultimate Alliance Bay Three. Bayonetta recently. was originally an exclusive when it first launched, right? Uh, Bayonetta so Two. Bayonetta Two was, but same kind of setup. Yes. Same team. It's S exclusive. With similar Nintendo. team. Yeah. You know, yeah. They, and you, they also had wonderful one on one, one oh one on mm -hmm. the, the Switch. This game uh, to start everything off is. Awesome. So much fun. I'm about two and a half hours in, 
It is a platinum game through and through. It is anime as all fuck in all the right ways. Is this a Greg Miller game? That was the question, remember? Absolutely not. No! Absolutely not. Because we watched the trailer, remember? And I was like, fuck, this kind of reminds me of Freedom Wars. Freedom Wars was weird. Yeah, but okay. So that stuff's weird, but it's... uh, you're not a big character action guy. Bayonetta, Devil May Cry. Yeah, no, that's, not, that's Greg not a Greg Miller. You like a bit more. A shout Greg Miller. Yeah, exactly. Uh, or Andy Cortez. Over on gonna be on this is an Andy Cortez <laughs> ass sirens. game. Both gameplay and aesthetic and story. And cool hairstyles. Sirens are Gundams. Around. So many customizable hairstyles. Whoa, get out of you start the game and then you're, there's these twins. You get to choose uh, if you're a brother and sister. No, I guess they're twins. Um, one is boys, twins can one, be brothers. Uh, and that's what threw me off. One of both. them dumb kids. Twenty years. Mm -hmm. uh, you get to choose the boy. You get to choose the girl. I usually choose the girls. It always goes back to send Super Mario Brothers two. You know what I mean? Choose, yeah, sure. Choose Same. You're, uh, you're fighting for representation. Flies. You know what I mean? Okay. All, yeah, exactly. Since day one. Uh, so I chose the girl, and then immediately you get to choose your hairstyle. You get to choose your hair color. You get to choose that your eye color. Sounds pretty good to me. Get to choose your skin See, color. See, I like this so far. Yeah, I don't like. I was like, didn't expect this for this type of game. You know doesn't really change too much of it. So it's mostly style, not your face or anything like that. You can like, change, you. there's different faces, but it's more like oh, color are of the face. Oh, than, even uh, though they're related, you can change. Oh, it's coloring. Yes. That's what I mean, it's more stylistic. It's not like you're changing structure. No, not, not structure. Okay. Um, and they don't really, even though they're twins, they don't look that much alike, but that's how twins work sometimes. You know what I mean? What's <laughs> yep. that called? Fraternal? Fraternal. Yeah. Is, uh, yeah. Are you actually changing the color of their skin or is it more like makeup? You just stuff. you choose like there's just a bunch of different colors that you like maybe like 15 colors you can like choose from emojis right yes it's very similar to emojis you do that and uh, oh, okay. you can change the eye colors the hair style color and the hair has like different physics and stuff and it's like you can tell the people who made this game they're like we want you to look fucking cool the way you want to they all have Andy Cortez ass hair Ooh. all of them no matter what hairstyle you pick. Like I tried to make mine look like Gia as much as I could. That was not happening. It just looks like, it looks like, <laughs> like if Gia <laughs> and Andy were like doing the weird like face mix thing. Animorphs. Yeah, yeah animorph. It's mm -hmm. it's an animorph in the middle of, <laughs> of Gia and Andy, right in the middle. Um, so, anyways, start playing the game. Uh, you you have to choose a character, do all that. Then you get in, and immediately it starts with a legit anime. Uh, animation <laughs> intro <laughs> opening where it's like a really shitty fucking like semi pop semi rock song Hell that is yeah. sang by somebody oh, yeah. that I don't think's ever sung before in their life. Butt uh, rock, in, probably. It, it's, it's, it's like Japanese butt rock. It's like, like butt rock mixed with uh, like with J with J pop. Okay, so right? it is a little more poppy then. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's like you're watching Death Note. It's like you're watching anything like super crazy stuff. Introduced to all the characters. And I'm like, I can't wait. To is meet it um, these fucking weirdos? Gameplay cutscene or is it like illustrated style storyboard? It's illustrated story, not, not storyboard, it's but like, like anime. It's style? it's in game engine, but it's not gameplay. Oh, oh, okay. Cutting through, just kind of giving you an introduction to the world and stuff. And as soon as that ended, I was like. All right, I'm in. You're in. You got my attention here. Uh, the gameplay starts right off the bat, and it's gameplay that's not the core of the game. You know, we always complain about like you get to the final boss of a game, and all of a sudden they switch things up. Here's a brand like, new mechanic. Here's a different mechanic perspective. That you don't do. and like what the hell? It was kind of like that, yeah. but reverse, oh. where you start off, it's this on rails uh, shooter type feeling thing, um, kind of like Sin and Punishment. Yeah, sure. You know? um, you're well, on a motorcycle, game. which is cool as fuck. Uh, in this tunnel and like you're just blasting motherfuckers and going and uh, I, I was happy that that part ended quickly because I pretty was much like, just moving this doesn't feel, shooting. that's pretty much it. And I was just like, this doesn't feel great. I want to get off this motorcycle. It looks cool, but like, I want to get to some real platinum gameplay. Once you get off that and you're actually walking around and stuff and you're introduced, like the tutorial section is fairly long, but it's fun. Like it didn't hit the point where I'm like, all right, all right, let's, let's right. keep moving. It was like, they're introducing you to a lot of different mechanics that are interesting. Did I, I'm sorry, did I miss how long, how far, how much you played? Two and a half hours. Yeah. yeah. And um, it's, from how much I played, it looks like it doesn't really matter if you choose the boy or girl. It just kind of flips the story of, of like, course, yeah. your character, or at least so far for me, doesn't talk. Uh, the other kid, like the, since I'm the girl, the boy talks a lot, and like his name's Akira, and it's mm. like, that's set that way. Your character's kind of just there doing stuff, so far at least. There's effort noises and stuff they make, but <laughs> there's not like dialogue stuff <laughs> yet. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. But pretty pretty quickly, you're introduced. You're kind of just thrown in and just like fight these enemies, and they're pretty low level, and you're just like ha having fun with it. And they don't get in the way with the tutorial until after that, and then little by little, they they introduce you to the different mechanics, and it's cool because it's very unique and unlike anything that I've played before, where it feels like a platinum game, but you're playing two characters at once because mm -hmm. you have your main character, and then there's your astral chain. Uh, which is the these they're called legions. They're the dogs that we've seen. Are like they're essentially Gundams. Um, in oh my forms. god! What an indie game! Yeah. There's, there's five in the game uh -huh. total. 
Um, and are actually with you when you're fighting, one. just one at a time. So far, one. Types, I, I think that like later you can. But in terms of general, it's like a dog. And it's like a summon or something. So here's the thing: in the two and a half hours I played. Jumping around a bit here, but in the two and a half hours I played, this game went from like, oh, cool, this is a platinum action game that is super anime. And then it was just like, oh, it's super anime, kind of like Power Rangers. And it's like, oh, it's super anime, kind of like Pokemon. Oh, it's super anime, kind of like Dragon Ball. It's like they keep adding elements where it's so clear that their sole goal with this game was, let's just fucking do something cool. <laughs> like, let's impress Andy every 15 minutes and make this. They need my sale. And they do. Yeah, it's true. And I, you, you need to <laughs> Twitch stream this. Like, yeah. it's going to be, it's going to be so great because. Things just keep happening that are like the epic hero sacrifice. That's like, I don't know they needed to do that, but I'm happy they did because <laughs> there's epic orchestral music playing underneath. And you're like, I need to avenge his death. I, I need to right now get out there. And so here's my thing. Up. You're talking about the action being a turn off for Greg Miller because mm -hmm. it's more like a Bayonetta, a Devil May Cry. Yeah, it sounds effect. like that. Is it in the way that when it ends, like it's like you're star rated? Did you get S yep. rank and all? Okay. So um, they're, it's clear that they're trying to speak more to you if you don't like that game yeah. those type of games yeah. because they're the different modes that they have like you don't choose um like easy medium hard like that it is there's the casual mode that is a uh, a bit more I, how i'd imagine you'd want to play it okay more focused on the light action rpg elements like they, i think that they learned a lot from near automata and you can see a lot of influence of that game in this um but then if you go down to the the, the regular mode i forgot what it was called but it's like Essentially, the description is like, if you like platinum action games, this is how you're going to want to play. This is how you're actually going to get the S rank, A rank. Like, you'll get ranked at the end of the levels. More and, arcade mode, sort of. Uh, it's not arcade mode, more like just traditional character action game, okay. where it's about stylish combos. It's about kind of really deep knowledge of playing this third person action game like a fighting game, you know? Um, and what's cool is the the mission breakdown. Every, every mission kind of has... Uh, micro missions within it so it's like chapter one right we'll have uh f you, so your cops so you have different files that you're going through so in this is not a cool one, great game then what's up not a cool great not game. a cool great game okay. definitely not a cool great game but uh <laughs> with the with the five with there's file one there's like a a case that you're investigating and stuff um and within that you're in this not an open world but an open area and in that open area, you can go through the critical path and do the, the file itself, or there's a bunch of different like mini things you can investigate, and that opens up different stuff that at the end of the mission, you get ranked on all five of the different ones, if you do them, but you don't need to do them all, but that's how you get the S rank and, and kind of go on from there. But uh, going back to what I was saying, Greg, about the, it not being necessarily a game for you is, it very much is a character action game of running around and mashing buttons over and over to do really mm -hmm. cool combos. And in the beginning, I was like, this seems a lot more simple than even a Bayonetta, where there's only one uh, weapon button. Like, there's only one attack button. Hmm. And you're switching between, you have this, like, police baton that you can either use as melee, or if you hit up on the D-pad, it turns into a gun. Uh, but you're still only hitting one button, the, the R2, whatever you want to call it. Sure. Um, to <laughs> ZR. I refuse to use God, it. It's not that. PlayStation uh, terminology. But... You're always just hitting that button uh, to do attacks. So I was like, this seems kind of limited compared to other games like this that normally have like a light, heavy, like different kind of variations of that. Um, but pretty quickly, when you're introduced to these legions, the different uh, characters you're controlling, you realize that you're controlling both at the same time. So as you're attacking, this other creature you have is also attacking with you. And it looks really chaotic on the screen until you realize that the chain, the astral chain that you have attached to this thing is a weapon as well. You can hold the L2 button to start controlling the the Legion, yeah. the mm -hmm. little monster guy, and then you use the right stick to control where they're going. So you can move both characters mm -hmm. using the left and right stick at the exact same time, and then you kind of create this tether, and then you use the chain, you can wrap around other enemies to tie them up, and okay. then they get staggered, and then you get to go in and just like do dual combos together oh, to cool. fuck them up, and it, th that's where it gets really cool. So. For the people like me who are listening or watching and who are all the way confused about everything you're talking about, <laughs> I just looked up some gameplay on YouTube to be like, I've heard of this game. I don't recall seeing this game. I have no idea what the fuck Tim is talking about right now. Um, <laughs> wow. So, no, I'm serious because, like, if you don't know what the premise for the game is and all you hear is the name Astral Chain, no, it and that it's a platinum game, you kind of go, okay, well, if I know who platinum is as a developer, I can maybe suss out what this game looks like. 100%. Right? You can. But if you don't know who platinum is, is as a developer, I've never played a platinum game. Mm -hmm. Then maybe you're like, this sounds 
weird. It's but, a character action game. But yeah, so essentially it's like a third person over the shoulder like character action game. What he means by a creature to the chain, which I did not understand until I actually saw the gameplay, was that he essentially has like a like a cuff on his left arm with or her, or her whoever, whatever gender you choose, right? With the chain attached to it. So it's like, it's, so it's, it's like a, a dog. Yeah. So it's like a leash. It's like a dog on a leash. Yeah. Yeah. And so, it's like some kind of weird creature and like the actual like leash, the chain is the astral is chain. the astral chain. Okay. Because the, get into the story that do, doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. Who cares? Who, who cares? Who cares? <laughs> it looks cool. But it's like, there's the astral sure plane that's coming over into our world and we need to stop him. Who gives a shit? It's just cool stuff and it's an excuse to fight big monsters. So that's what the, the chain is what brings these creatures in from this other dimension to fight alongside you. Because most of the running honest, around Andrea, in the world I stuff I see. Yeah. The what? chain is just coiled up by your arm and there's no creature with you. This goes back to it. So you the summon point of this them. game is being cool as fuck. Why? I don't know. Is that what's happening? <laughs> like, I don't know. I can tell you in the opening cinematic, there it, it, it reminds me a lot of Ruby or Genlock, where it's just like the, the art style and characters of that. Um, but it opens up, there's like this like mad scientist looking dude, and there's like a, a cage, and there's this robot in the cage, the robot starts attacking everybody, but he looks like he has it under control, he's like, oh, yeah, he it's is. gonna be fine. And you can tell the robot's bad, because it's red. But then all of a sudden, he like pushes a button, and the yeah, robot turns, turns blue. blue and Shut you, and the, then, I was kidding. Swear to God. <laughs> I'm telling you, dude, it's like, this is, no, there's nothing crazy about yeah. this. Like, we, we've seen this before. It's Andy. pretty black and white. It's yeah, pretty it's like, red and blue. Uh, yeah. So, sure, uh, and blue. then it turns blue, and then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, he's controlling it. And then there's this like weird thing that they, that puts on their arm that can put out this leash that you attach to the like robot. A, like a bracer, right? Yeah, it's like, I, I, I don't even know. It's just like a leash attached, attached to this weird ass thing that transforms on you. Mm. Why? Because it looks fucking cool. But to ant, yeah. So I get that a lot more now. That was good to go through that. But how do you summon this thing, or is it always there? That was one piece I wasn't totally. So clear. it's not always there. Like, is it a super? It's there or is it, most of the time. It's not a, a super. Lot. It's okay. definitely part of your um, like core abilities. Core abilities okay. where you summon it. I think with the L one button, and it'll pop up. But there's kind of like a. Uh, stamina meter okay, that, that, so starts, like a... that, that starts going down, and if it hits zero, you need to wait for the battery to recharge, okay. and then you get to use it again. Um, but it, it recharges pretty, like pretty quickly. No, I thought that one character you had to like summon the yes, it's yeah, like yeah. Joker it's a Joker uses Persona and Smash. Yeah, v. yeah, well, maybe yeah. a little like that. Anyway, it, it is like that, like jo uh, Joker and Smash, but you get it a lot more often. Got it. Like, okay. you, you have these things constantly. It's just you only don't have them when it's like. It's like it's a cooldown that's necessary, or else you would just be like, yeah, yeah you'd go hall keep it the entire time. time. Um, but it's it's cool because it it's you can go through and just kind of button mash and have fun. But when you start using the chain to combo things up and stagger the enemies, and then decide when you want to attack with your character versus the the legion or both at the same time, mm -hmm. or have the legion attack melee while you're kind of back. Uh, with projectiles like that's where the real fun comes and already like, like I was saying like every 15 minutes I feel like the story ups the ante and introduces something that's just batshit insane in a good way where I'm like I just can't wait to see where this game ends because the characters have a very like, Metal Gear quality to them metal gear. where you're just like like why are these characters so ridiculous like Otacon. what kind like there, there's like an Otacon character that's just like the, the you know the kind of uh, the, the woman in the seat who's just back at the computer like ridiculous, crazy blonde or um, pink hair, and she's just like so over the top in everything she does. It's like why? It's like because it's cool. Every fucking thing about this game is because it's cool. It's it plays. It feels cool to play. It looks cool to watch. It sounds cool. The music's cool. I still want to try it. It's cool. But Based on when we talked about this a few games cast ago, and we watched the trailer, mm -hmm. like that's when I was like, okay, yeah, like I see where I think I would be able to actually like this and get into it. Like yeah. the police angle seems cool. These officers that have these guys that are attached to them that are going to go out there and do this thing. Story-wise, yes. So yeah. my cons to the game so far, the investigation stuff is not fun. Mm. It's really basic, and it so far really feels like, okay, I'm here. There's a glowing red thing there. It's where I need to go. Of course. You go, you hit A, and then text comes up, and stuff starts happening. It's kind of like detective mode. And okay. it's, it's stuff that we've seen before. It just doesn't feel well implemented. Okay. And I'm constantly just like, just let me get back to the fights. Yeah. Like, and I get that they're doing that to kind of not make it feel like every other Platinum game, but it just kind of feels unnecessary um, at this point, especially because it's like having a bunch of story stuff that like isn't working for you. Let's just get to the big part where we have to fight the big monster. <laughs> you yeah, know what I mean? Because that's what we that's what we want. Um, Sounds like you wanted Freedom Wars. You should have supported it. Yeah, no. Um, but the the other thing is visually, 
I like the aesthetic of the game, but it kind of looks like Vanquish. Okay. And it's like, a, which is cool. I, but hmm. but a, a game in 2019 looking that way, oh, like it, it very much looks okay. like a. You mean it looks like Vanquish on PS3? It looks dated. Yeah, yeah, okay. it looks like a PS3 game, gotcha. uh, which is not a problem. But and especially because it's playing on Switch, and so far no real uh, issues with frame rate or anything. It's very smooth, um, and like it's very responsive that to what I'm doing, me, which actually. you need uh, for. <laughs> but I think that it's because they decided to. Have the visual fidelity scale not down quite a bit. as yeah right. scale down. Do you remember if it runs at sixty frames per second? I don't know. Okay, but and I, I'm not most attuned person to that type of stuff. But I it feels it good does, though because it's the type of game that should that, that should. And I think that it does. Uh, yeah. We can look that. Yeah, up. so it's got to be then 720p 60. Oh yeah, if it sure. is probably. But we, it's all right. We can answer after. I, mean, I don't want to put anybody on the spot. Um, you know, Mr. PC TurboTax always uh, thinking about your your hertz and your frames. Uh, I need a new. I need to play PC Builder. To be quite on my honest, PC. it is the superior way to play action games. So you should have oh, played God of War that way. 60. And if you played it in cinematic, like blurry mode, that's fine and all. It looks very nice, but you played it the wrong way, and that's fact. PS4 Pro, God of War. Is that straight mode. from the lips of Mr. Barlog? Is that what he no, said? No, but I bet you if we call him right now, he'll agree. Mm, Actually, I don't know about won't. that one. Dance dance around. Dance I know he will. He will. Way out of I know. He'll, he'll dance around and be like, well, you know, there's he really will no say the best way to play God of War right is on way. PlayStation 4 Pro because that's what the marketing folks told him to say. Or, even better yet, the answer. best way to play God of War is however you want to play. That's what I'm no, saying. He no, would dance around no, it. But he, it he wouldn't be that straightforward. He'd dance around it. He would say that afterwards. In any event, 60 frames per second. Let's go. Yeah. Now it's sounding I mean, good. Getting, so, it's a platinum game. But that's, <laughs> but that's really good. And that's why I thought it probably was. And if you're not noticing performance issues, awesome. Because I would have, you know, they, they try to do a lot in their games. Actually, yeah. I believe, if I'm thinking, Maybe it's Vanquish like a 540 had, had like issues. The Witcher is. <laughs> it might be. I mean, again, it's just like. I doubt it's that. It, it's not low. the biggest con. Because, like, the aesthetic and style of the game is, they nailed it. Like, the, the neon look of everything. It's like, yep, yeah, this is everything I want from it. It's got a very highly animated vibrant. look. It's not trying for photorealism. And so I think that yeah, I think a lower front or a or resolution would work, but it yeah. reminds me. I, earlier, it, I was saying Genlock and uh, and Ruby. Like, it definitely looks like those more than like a high quality TV anime. You know, like yeah. there's this kind of like lower level to it overall. Which, but you think it looks doesn't good, matter because right? the gameplay is fun. Like it the fits. gameplay is totally there. It looks does fun. it fit? What? In other words, would you want would you want it to look better? Do you wish that they had more horsepower? And you are yeah, you left feeling definitely. it. You're left thinking about it. Okay. I, I I feel like it's a little flat. So maybe. far, there's nothing about this that I'm like, ooh, I'm happy this is a Switch exclusive. Okay. Like, I, I'd always be like, I'd rather it be on PS4 and Xbox yep. One. Uh, to are you get those ever bonuses. happy a game is a Switch it's a great exclusive? Answer. Yeah, a lot, a, lot, a lot of times it's portable. It's great. Well, exclusive, but it doesn't have to be exclusive, sure. right? For it to you for you to enjoy it on your Switch. I mean, okay, whatever, not about exclusive, but <laughs> I, like, I prefer you, to play games on Switch. That's what I was saying. I think she was most the same. When do you, how often do you want to play it on your Switch versus this? Maybe you would want a higher fidelity, huh? Yeah. For this no. type of game, I think it just fits better. Like, because yeah. the fidelity matters when you're talking about frame rates and you're talking about how the yeah, game like feels cry, right? it looks moment to moment. Yeah, Devil May is a perfect example because it looks so great. RE Engine, man. Especially on PC. This with the RE Engine would be fantastic. Yep. But, anyway. Heard it. That's that. We can now <laughs> unmute. Alrighty. Bear, we need to unmute. So, man, Death Stranding, it was like Death Stranding so much Death again. Stranding Insane. that we got, got it. it. it we're, like, not, we're still muted. So right? much Coffee more complicated than I thought it was going to be, too, <laughs> you know? I think every time we have done a muted, we always joke that it's Death Stranding. It's Death Stranding, Yeah, we joke about it all the time. Borderlands <laughs> 3. <laughs> yeah, buddy. So, I was invited by 2K to come up to their offices and get hands on with a new build where they gave us access to about four to five hours of gameplay, like a, a big chunk. So we spent the first part of the day playing uh, Flack, the vault hunter who's the beast master character. The beast master. And we'd seen a little bit of him, but really hadn't gotten to dive into his skill tree. And I'm pretty set on playing Amara because I'm a siren person, but He's a close contender right. for a potential second, Zane's second in pick. Zane's yeah. running for me right now. So Yeah, I, I, I sing, I, I've been soldier every game, right? Like I just like that, basically, except for Athena in pre-sequel. Uh, when they brought this by the office and let Andy and I play in Capture, that was my thought, too, of like, man, this is actually pretty awesome. Like having the, the pet run out and attack things for you, right? And have, yeah. I, I had to keep saving Andy. You know what I mean? It was really <laughs> well, you know, I just I didn't have something doing all the work for well, me. Well, you know, I just invested oh, my points correctly. But we oh, know, I digress. Okay. I digress. <laughs> 
So yeah, having a, a little animal by your side is great. So there's three different animals that you could choose from. Um, I went with the spider ant. Um, there's also a jabber that throws acid barrels. And then there is the... Why is it a spider ant? Why not just one or the other? It's like, It looks like an because insect it's, from a fucking Starship Troopers sort of thing. Okay. It's kind of a weird. combo. Because it's, it's got, like, it's it's got the ant. multi-sections that the, an ant has, but it doesn't have eight legs. The thorax? And it's, and it's got, yeah, and it's got a, a, like a big armored piece on its front, front part of its okay. thorax. And then it's got like the kind of spider-looking legs that mm. ants are similar, but they're different. It doesn't have eight legs, though. Yeah, it's, right. it's just an alien-looking insect. Half yeah. okay. So yeah. there's three, is there an animal at the top of each tree? Is that what you're getting at? Correct. So yes. that's your like main class ability you're right. choosing. And the final so, one's a guard so wait, skag. Sp yeah, a spider skag. ant thingy, a... The skag. Skag. Yeah. And which then is a what? the is jabber. Like a dogish. Skags. You, you skags are the ones, the first things you ever kill in Borderlands. Oh, they run yeah. at you all skags. the time. Yeah, yeah right. they're, they're kind of like like a wolf. Yeah, yeah, they're weird dogs. Yeah, yeah. Dog yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you got a skag. I just googled skag. Nope, that's no, that. Yeah, you need more information than that. I bet. Borderlands. No, I wasn't skag. Thinking the anime skag <laughs> definition is a smelly pirate hooker. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Some believe that it comes from a mix of skank and other See? various terms. <laughs> and the hag. Just in case people were confused. Um, yeah, and exactly. And some other third thing. Um, oh yeah, no, there's no confusion. Anyway, what's cool about uh, Flack as a character is that um, I believe Flack is a, a non-binary character. Hmm. And so Flack's pronouns are they, oh. uh, which is... I think a really progressive thing for mm -hmm. for Borderlands to do, and he's um or, or they them robot the, it. What's the singular of they? They. You just, just say that. You just say that. Um, I apologize if I get the pronouns wrong, um, because I'm I'm bad at grammar just in life. So, <laughs> Flack is really fun because you get to have a, an animal buddy with you the whole time, and I, I don't know why I just keep gravitating towards the idea that. You get to have your all of your skins that Flack wears are also skinned on your animal buddy. Mm. And so the first skin that I unlocked in the vending machine, I had no idea that it was also going, going to skin Why my little friend. And so as your friend like runs around the world, you can see the skin on them too, which I it's thought like was really cool. It's like MeUndies. You can buy them for you and your dog. That's Imagine. true, the buddy band. <laughs> mm. Make your better half, match your bottom half. There we go, and Portillo. Okay. Okay, sorry, I thought, you were going to say something, then you didn't. No, I was just kept, I was going with the MeUndies shit. It's yeah. as much as Greg had to offer. Yeah. Um, oh, so you have the skill tree up here? Yep. I was going to bring gameplay, and then I forgot my hard drive at home. Sorry, guys. My bad. All right. um, but I'll upload it later, and you guys can check it out if you want to see me. You playing. can go to YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny Game. See the party mode. Nitro Rifle and Flapjack back It's yet. not done that yet, though. Right? So by the time this goes up for everybody else on Monday, how bad could Andy's computer issues be that it's not live <laughs> on Monday? That bad. Oh, oh, not it. that bad. <laughs> yeah, me and Greg both both played as Flack, um, and uh, I think the first power that I went with was to summon the two eagles that fly. Like, it, it wasn't an actual summon. It was just, like, this superpower that you send out two sort of fire looking kind of birds. I forgot what the name of those birds are. And they, they cut into enemies and it's really fucking awesome. It's really cool. They dive bomb them, yeah. yeah. It's um, a really cool ability. To do that stop. while also be shooting other enemies, like it's just, the game feels great. It, you know, it looks great. Uh, obviously, you know, being on a, a higher end console, the texture fidelity is gorgeous. Like mm -hmm. this game's gonna, this game's gonna be very addicting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What I really like about what they've done with the skill trees, and we've talked about this before when we've done previews, is that they've really let you customize them in a way that we haven't seen in the Borderlands franchise before. So specifically with Flack, you're able to kind of pick and choose like which animal friend you want and then what you want his passive ability to be. So you could really split the trees more than you can with even some of the other Vault Hunters that are in Borderlands 3, which I really like. And so I tried out a couple of the other um, animals and I tried out some of his passives. I mean, obviously you're gonna wanna make a commitment relatively quickly because you can swap around as much as you want, but once your upgrade points are in, you know, you want to really kind of commit to a specific path to like dump all your points down a specific tree. But there's a lot more flexibility this time around. So you could have multiple people playing Flack on your team mm -hmm. and they could all have their own different version of that well, character. Well, that's back to what we've talked about before, right? The, the fact that everybody has the three different skill trees, right? So that even though I, me and Andy during the party mode went out of our way to be like, all right, I was doing the skag one, you're doing the ant one, so it was like we were trying to show each other different things, right? So like, yeah, your super was the uh, the birds or whatever, right? But then mine was the gamma. 
where yeah. I was like, I let this gamma radiation bomb go, which then made my skag bigger. And suddenly mm. he was doing, he was huge and doing more damage. It was a great distraction if I was picking up Andy as I often yeah, had to. Well, right, so that's, that's what they're You know what I mean? Yeah. Or yeah. get up there and do all this different stuff. Uh, Andrew, how'd you like Amara? Um, I really loved Amara. I thought she was awesome. Yeah, she, was, really she cool. was my favorite. And I've gotten to play with all four of the Vault Hunters now because in the second half of my playthrough, when they uh, fast forwarded us to Eden Six, a different planet in mm -hmm. the Borderlands universe, um, I played as Moe's, um, the girl that has the mech. The mech, yeah. Um, but Amara was my favorite. And I played her at the reveal event. And what I really like about her is that. At first, I thought she was going to be a more melee-focused siren, and I was really hesitant about that because yeah, I'm a, were, I'm a ranged that, player. That. But you can, of course, you know, customize the three different trees that she has, and you can play her very much like I played Maya in Borderlands 2. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's what I'm probably going to start with just because I prefer that type of gameplay. I, I like to do more range stuff, I like to do more CC, more crowd control. Um, I usually am not like the the tank that like gets right up in the mix and yeah. is like a shotgun or anything. I had the ability that, uh, I ended up upgrading the ability that I guess a, a huge hand comes out of the ground yeah. and holds the enemy in the air. Phase grasp. Yeah it's, yeah, it's like a very like holographic sort of look thing and it, it holds the enemy and basically holds it in place so you could just, you know, pump bullets well, into yeah, it. Yeah, that's really cool just like too. Maya's ability from yeah. Borderlands 2, which I really like. I mean, obviously it's different for a variety of reasons. You don't need to like get into the details with me, people in the comments, about why it's different. <laughs> I know it's different. But, I mean, the the concept is like you're essentially stunning or freezing an enemy in place. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I can't wait to try it, Flack. Yeah, I've tried all th three before uh, Flack. Um, and I was just really like, Zane is the one that I'm still excited about and what I was like the guy. Yeah, really? Zane, the guy with the shield. Um, huh, I don't he has like so. the shield. It's Zane, right? Yeah, you put the Zane, shield down. Yeah, that's right. So he's the operative. Exactly. So it's very, I would just say that was, I specifically chose Zane and this was at the reveal event because it's not the type of character that I normally gravitate towards. I do, I played, yeah, Siren in Borderlands 1. Um, I'm Gage in Borderlands 2. Like those were my mains. But then I was like, you know, like no, I always felt like nobody was picking Zane. That was part of it. Everyone wanted to be uh, Amar at the time because they were just so excited about Amara. And I totally understand why. I mean, why. those abs. Right? <laughs> They're amazing. Um, but for Zane, just carrying around a shield and big guns, I was like, this sounds interesting. And once I started playing, um, it, it, Zane also has the warp, right? So you can warp to, you can He's leave. He's got the digital clone, yeah, you the clone shield, yourself. and the sentinel drone. Exactly. So you can't have all three at once, but I use the clone and the shield, which they actually, when they did the demo, they recommended the drone and the clone which was fine. Uh, but anyway, the point is there's so much flexibility in each character that the truth is it's not even just about the character. It's like you guys were just getting at it. It's what skills within there, you know, that you choose that really define how you play. And again, when I switched off the drone and the clone uh, to having the shield, I literally, I did, like my eyes lit up. I was like, this is so much fun. And I, I put the shield down, I didn't know at the time. And I saw that I could like pick it back up and take it with me and move it around, which just, again, was something, a detail I didn't expect to be there. And there's a lot of that going on in Borderlands. So I'm super stoked. I think they've added so many little uh, quality of life improvements over what they've done previously in the franchise that really excites me are they reinventing the wheel here no but i don't care as long as the polish is there and so far yeah, it's definitely about the it polish. really feels like it is and so the game is officially gold they did say that the build that we had it's wasn't gold. the completely final build that they were still doing some last minute polishes and fixes um but because i got to play for such an extended period of time i got to try a, a wide variety of guns and they all just feel so much fun to play i got it got to the point where i got anxiety about not being able to try all of the different guns because you pick up so many guns all the time through the loot drops that i hate like dropping things or not being able to vault in so i always spend money right away to upload uh, or increase my backpack size so i can mm, yeah. carry more stuff but the alt firing modes adds just another layer to that so this is something new for borderlands 3 that they have added so yeah. uh, not every gun has an alt firing mode but a lot of them do mm. and so essentially you just hit down on the d-pad and it changes from potentially doing like burst fire to mm. like slugs or something like that. Or if you have a, a shotgun, it maybe it goes into like a grenade launcher. Yeah. Um, and so things like that, that really make it just that much more fun to really nerd ab out about the loot chase um, is really what is the defining characters you want to see in, in a looter shooter. And that's what scares me about it, right? <laughs> is how nerdy you can get with it. So Fran, what I'm gonna point out is, hmm. if you go to the Borderlands website right now, 
you can go and experiment with the skill trees and build it out so that maybe when you're playing with your friends, you don't sit in your menus for 45 minutes. <laughs> Hemming and oh, yeah. whatever. Because <laughs> I know. I'm not how many We've names. all been victim to this, did, fam. Did we, did we possibly make that joke similar during party <laughs> mode? Where did we were you? Like, well, well, I'm just in the menus right now, just like in Fran's streams. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. I happen to play games that have a lot of menus. I'm just saying you can do some homework ahead of time. Hey, I'm with you. I actually you think that is amazing, and that's a, it's a pro tip. Protein I'll take it as a constructive yeah. tip. And I'll just more. shove it up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything about Borderlands 3 for you guys right now that you don't think looks too hot? The, the one thing that I did notice was that Does there's it. a couple of the characters who clearly are not original voice actors, and it's mm, obvious mm, that mm. they aren't original voice. The good thing about it is that you don't Clap see Trap? those characters. I'm talking about specifically Claptrap and Reese are the two characters mm. that I saw. Um, and... You don't see Reese very much um, in the beginning, and I'm not going to say anything more about that because I don't want to get into story spoilers about what. what and that's pretty much all they've said publicly anyway. Right. Like once you get there, it won't be that big of a deal. Um, it, it feels like you'll have some a, a little bit of interaction with him, and then you hopefully won't have to ever see him again because I really don't Voice like what they've. Bad. I don't like what they've done. No, it's not good. Um, so, Travis Willingham. But for me, for new players, is it going to bother you the performance? Um, See what I mean? Like if you're a new player, big fan, it's going to bother you. If you so never played Tales from the Borderlands, you probably won't care. You'll just think that oh. he's a super annoying character. That's right. Oh, he's from Tales. That's right. Yeah. Um, Claptrap, on the other hand, is different because he's been so involved in the franchise for so long. He's the like one of the poster mm. kids for this franchise. And I, it's hard yet to say how involved Claptrap is going to be in the story overall. Um, but it's it's noticeable. That said... It's he's still funny. The writing's still good. His performance is good. It's just different, mm -hmm. and I can tell that it's different. And for me, it's it's tough because that's one of my favorite characters in this franchise. And I know people have a love hate relationship with Claptrap. I think people either like Claptrap's my homeboy, or they're like I want him to die in a fire. Yeah. Um, I love sometimes <laughs> too much talking. I love huh? Claptrap. Yeah. Uh, love when Clap. we were at the reveal event, and it, he popped up, and it was like, oh, that's really cool. And then it was like, oh, well, it's not him. And they're like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, whatever. Uh, it wasn't until I went back and played Borderlands 2 stuff mm -hmm. again and, or like watch videos and I think uh, we're t tinkering around where, where I was like, oh my God, he sounds so different. It was mm -hmm. that thing that I, I didn't catch it after, you know, it being so long since I touched a Borderlands game with Claptrap in it yeah. to get there and then hear it and be like, oh, that's normal. But then to have him back to back, I was like, oh shit, that is really different. That said, they have a bunch of new characters that are awesome and we got to meet one in Eden 6. Um, so this might constitute light story spoilers. It's a big news story today if I know where you're going. Yeah. Right? We talked about it in Games Daily. It's one of the tidbits Oh, okay, today. about Ice-T? Yeah. Okay, so there's a character Ice called... Ice motherfucking T is Bayless, in this game. And I recognize so his voice me. instantly. <laughs> so and you're telling me these lands don't have borders? <laughs> <laughs> and he's, I mean, without question, he's fantastic. And the character he plays is super ridiculous. Mm. And I'm not going to say anything about how you meet his character or anything like that. There are videos out there, I'm sure, if you want to go find them and you want to look. Um, it's so much fun, and that, I think, is, you know, Borderlands doing what it does best is to introduce these wacky characters with these weird, like, background stories about why they're in Pandora or whatever planet you meet them on, Eden 6 for Balex's, um case. But he was super fun, and I'm really looking forward to seen more new characters uh, come into the storyline and be part of the universe. Also good for him for being the as big of a gamer as he is. Yeah. Like this isn't just some random celebrity kind of coming into a different ecosystem that they're not used to. This is like Ice T fucking plays games all the time and he tweets about them all the time. What's his Twitter? Final level. Final yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Final, Final level. level. He tweets all the time about, you know, and he always puts a hashtag to let his Non gamer followers know, oh, this is a gamer tweet. Yeah, yeah, and he'll like, he'll, he'll hashtag it like gaming tweet or something like that. <laughs> He's oh, the best. Ice it's tea. awesome. Yeah, the, when, when Division two, he was huge on Division two. Yeah. And then when he was like, I'm gonna stop. I've been grinding the same thing, and this and he's like, this is always heartbreaking when you see a game. Dude, this like, damn. <laughs> I see, like, fucking knows about the gear grind, and when the division two is up, his gear scoring shit. It's so cool. You gotta follow Ice T on Twitter. <laughs> like, I don't even know what he's talking here because I tweet some developers. You've always been a little bitch boy. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh no! If you talk Fuck, shit, I see. a broke motherfucker trying to talk shit. Yeah, he <laughs> if you try to troll, back. I see, and he totally just fucking rips he will you apart. Clap back. It's sends the best. everybody back. Here. Clap back. Clap trap. Uh, yeah, Borderlands Three. I, my one thing off the demo, well, you know what we played, what we captured, whatever. This is a Greg Miller thing. I'm just not good at it. I'm never good at driving these kind of vehicles. It, oh. You know what I mean? Oh. Where it's like the. Up is always go, but it's where you're pointing your head, to, and I'm just He's had, it's like Halo. Warthog controls, uh, man. It breaks my brain, dude. Man, I was real bad. Yeah, yeah me I too. Was yeah. Especially Dave, bad. It's a, it's I'll a be your guys' thing. driver, man. I got that shit on. See, lock. I'm always Vehicles the driver are, too, man. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Boom. Tim, are you gonna play this? Because we've I'll be your about driver, it. dude. Let's go. But I'm <laughs> yeah. not, I, no, real talk. Like looking at <laughs> it, like with you guys, Tom. I've never played a Borderlands game. I was really interested in one when it first came out, but like I was staying at Alfredo's house for a while while he was playing it, so I watched him play it for a long so, time and I was like this looks dope as fuck uh, but I just never got into it yeah. so with this one I want to give it a shot but I don't think it's my type of game but what's hey, the last okay. shooter you've played shooter yeah first well, person shooter I, mean, I, 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 I wouldn't even go that way because you love Halo yeah and stuff like I, I that. play a lot of the, like, more, like the campaign ones yeah, I played a little bit of Apex. Yeah, but you're more like that's right. I remember you. It's a looter Master shooter that I think would stuff. be the stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, mm -hmm. I love that stuff. I like campaigns. You know, it's, I like well, yeah, story it's open modes. world leveling. That's kind of like not the moment there's an open world. I'm like, I don't know, man. But and what see, I that's like what I'm so excited about. When we were playing and we were doing the stuff, and it was like, well, run through this to get through the prologue faster. To do okay, cool. And I started picking up side missions, and I was like, ah, oh, I can't wait. And coming home and telling Jen about it because we're excited to play it together. You know, we're trying to get finish the DLC. That's a story to itself. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're so excited to play Borderlands three together and I was like awesome keep in mind as soon as I get I'm gonna start playing she's like what the hell I'm like but no they fixed it in this game where we can play each other I can come to your instance and help you through your story and then our things will be auto match and I'm getting gear so it's like to just go into my world and nerd out and do every little side quest and do every little thing. Yeah, I mean, hopefully, hopefully it's smooth. Did you guys experience that recently? Like the actual, like, have you played at different levels with anyone yet and had hands on? Well, with that? again, for us in party mode, I got way ahead of Andy really quick. But it, no, it's no, no, like, you know, but in other words, it sounds good. It looks good. Um, yeah, no, I don't know if I really they say sounds it. good. Obviously, we'll we haven't seen the yeah. instance I hope loot that. in action because they haven't given us an opportunity to have like a level forty in with a level ten. Yeah, right, but. Everything that I've played is great. What I think is so much more approachable about Borderlands being a first-person shooter RPG hybrid is that the RPG components are are not as intensive as they are even in like Destiny 2, right? Like even just seeing what all the changes that they're making to Destiny, like the individual grind for pieces for like the gauntlet you want or the helmet that you want, um, that is not as big of a deal here because that stuff's more cosmetic. Yeah, I Where here agree. it's just about the guns. You just got to figure out which gun you like and the style of gun you like mm -hmm. and figure out like, do I want an elemental or do I want like a special alt firing mode? And it's really all about the weapons. And so I think having that laser focus for the RPG progression element just beyond gear for guns makes it much more approachable to people who are like, I don't want to be in my menus all the time. I want to be out there having fun, you know, just getting into the action and having combat scenarios and not like feeling like I have to be in my vault managing my inventory for an hour. There, there's yeah, not I mean, a whole lot to learn. To, but yeah, the, the thing that scares me about every time I want to go back to Destiny is there's always a new system that changed where it, yeah. you know, breaking down these two items uh, can give you an item that you put on your helmet that then gives you an item that boosts your whatever the fuck. It's just like, it's a lot of stuff to worry about and a lot of yeah. item management. And with Borderlands, it's, you pick the character of the archetype that you prefer mm -hmm. and then the guns are cool and the better colored gun is going to be better than the other colored gun that you had, you They're know. Fixing some of that now, by the way, with Armor 2.0. But oh, Jesus. that is, is, there, is, is there I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if the word fixing is the no, word no, I would it's use. No, Changing. but with what he described, oh, you, you now, in theory, <laughs> it's a longer discussion. But is there you're going to get mods, you can just slot everyone. Oh, yeah. Well, there's, a, there's that a Borderlands that 3 main it. story. Like, is that I think, cool? I mean, one of the, uh, and I'll, I'll please, but I, one of the strengths, I think, starting with Borderlands 2, Borderlands 1 didn't do it for me, and I didn't stick around, but that's a different story, too. But Borderlands 2, I think, introduced such a great cast of characters that had so many comedic moments talking to them that I thought, yeah, I think crit pathing Borderlands 2... Uh, the pre-sequel. Great writing. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, you're getting all these great characters and really funny things. I'm expecting that from Borderlands 3. Cool. Yeah, it's yeah, going to be hard for you to crit path because you're going to pick up so many fun side quests that you're going to want to do them. And I, it was hard for me just in my demo. And they specifically said, you don't have enough time to do all these side quests. You could maybe pick one. And there was like eight that popped mm. up when I was crit pathing in this like three to four hour session in the first section that we played in. But I really love where they're going with the Calypso twins as these 
these new characters, these quote new media asshole Stringers. antagonists. YouTubers. You know the, yeah, and like it's like 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 su- subscribe and obey. You know, it's like this whole they like ha- yeah. tongue in cheek thing about people who do what we do. <laughs> yeah, totally. They're making fun of YouTubers and content yeah. creators, but they're running it. a cult. It's it's. Great. I love it because we all know that new media asshole. We all know one. <laughs> Or multiples. <laughs> it's Tim. It's me. Uh, yeah, the, if, if, for those who don't know, uh, in terms of the main mission stuff, the, you literally they're labeled main missions, um, and the only thing keeping you from doing them normally is your level. So worst case, you know what you have to do, Tim, and yeah. you just might have to level up, and that's where it sort of depends. But usually, if you're just following main missions, they're pretty much you can always do something that carries you forward, and it's not confusing at all. So cool. You should definitely give it a try. Yeah, I will give it's it. Nothing a shot. like Destiny in terms of yeah, the, I, or Division Thank by God. any means. Like in terms of how much detail I think there is, and like, wait, do I keep it? Do I lead it? That was the big thing for me coming into Borderlands. That I'm just still excited to start grinding because I never quite got to deep end game grind in it. But uh, in other words, in these other games I mentioned, there's like so many items and stuff. But in Borderlands, I quickly learned, and to what Andrew was even getting at, there's so many cool guns. But the good news is, it doesn't matter if you throw it away, really. Like, kind of for a brief moment, you'd be like, mm, I wish I kept that one. But then, like, 30 another minutes cool later, gun. another cool gun. Just so many cool guns. And then eventually, the end game is for the really, really, really cool guns. And those you, you will be targeting. But, um, but anyway, the point is, you can throw stuff away and not worry about it, which I think gives me and everybody anxiety in those other games. Totally. Yeah. And, yeah. De- yeah. and ultimately, if you're not me, you won't have that anxiety. I still get tons yeah. of anxiety deleting stuff in Borderlands. And like the art you don't need to worry. on each of the individual guns, I, I took time in my in my footage to like just inspect and like swing the guns around and just yeah. look at how the detail they put in. He talks They're about really you could cool. just throw it away, throw it away, but like each of those, an artist like handcrafted each of those guns and it might speak to you as a player, it might speak to me as a player that's style of the style of F- FPS I yeah. like. I just I'm very impressed by everything I've seen so far, and I'm I can't wait. Yeah, me too. Hundred oh, yeah. percent. By the way, I had the the question about the birds. Are they the the racks the, or whatever? The racks. Yeah. Oh, they are racks. Okay, so yeah. it is the enemies from the game that you're controlling. Yeah, there's two of them, and they're on I fire. See. They'll dive bomb. Yeah. It's a it's a one of your specials. Yeah. I know we were almost we were almost there before. I figured I'd land on that. Let me tell you about our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by. Quip. The easiest way to ease back into a routine, let me tell you. It's to start it up before step September, especially if you're headed back to school. Simplify the morning and evenings now with a simpler electric toothbrush from Quip. I've been using these things religiously twice a day. I've told you guys about this already. There's the built-in two-minute timer. It vibrates, and you know to change the quadrant of your mouth to get a nice, even, clean. It's been fantastic. They send you the toothpaste. They send you the uh, the refill packs for the new brushes, and you don't need to think about it anymore. I always used to struggle with having to think about uh, how long have I used this toothbrush, Cool Greg? You know what I mean? Like, what do I need to get a new one? I don't need to think about it anymore. Every three months, they send me it, and I'm like, oh, now's time. Pop it off. Pop it in. Let me begin. Uh, the best thing that I like about it as well is that it comes with this little stand that you can flip the toothbrush, pop it in, and all of a sudden it turns into a carrying case that you can take when you travel. I'm about to go to Toronto right now, and guess what? I'm going to have a real sleek, sexy little toothbrush that I get to go. But there, when I get to the hotel, it turns back into a stand. Whoa. Bada bing, bada boom. No Wow. Way. Coolest guy in the room. Uh, you guys can go to... Get Quip.com slash KF right now and get your first refill pack for free. Um, Quip starts at just $25. You can change your oral health right now for very cheap. Um, it's your first refill pack free at getquip.com slash KF. Get Quip.com slash KF. Also, shout out to Upstart. As most of us have found out the hard way, getting into debt, that's easy. Getting out, that's hard, especially if your FICO score isn't great. Thankfully, now there's Upstart.com, the revolutionary lending platform that knows you're more than just your credit score, and it offers smarter interest rates to help you pay off high interest credit card debt. Greg Miller often tells the story about it back in his college days. He got that extra credit card, totally forgot about it, didn't realize that behind the scenes it was messing up a lot of his credit. This could have totally helped him could have helped to get that FICO score up when you needed it. Upstart goes beyond the traditional FICO score when assessing your credit worthiness. They actually reward you based on your education and job history in the form of a smarter interest rate. They make it fast, simple, and easy to check your rate in just a few minutes without affecting your credit score. And the best part 
is once the loan's approved, most people get their funds the very next business day. Uh, you can free yourself from the burden of high interest credit card debt by consolidating everything into just one monthly payment with Upstart. You can see why Upstart's ranked number one in their category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot. And hurry to upstart.com slash kind of funny to find out how low can you go. How low and how low your upstart rate is. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes and won't affect your credit. That's upstart.com slash kind of funny. U P S T A R T dot com slash kind of funny. Now, Andy, <laughs> Overwatch. Oh, yeah, real What's quick. Up? Uh, Overwatch update went through uh, oh. for, for competitive, where mm -hmm. um, it is this new thing they introduced called Roll Queue. Um, so, back in the day when you would um, queue up to play competitive, Overwatch, uh, obviously, the, the best sort of composition you want is two tanks, two damage, two support players. Obviously. 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 <laughs> I mean, Whenever you join a competitive, thing. a lot of people prefer to play damage, so you end up with, like, one tank and four damage players and one healer, and then your yeah. team loses and everybody like, gets pissed off. Mercy. and Fucking quit getting, get, you know, don't play Widowmaker. You're fucking, you're trash, dude. Fucking play with it. So a lot, there's one a lot of fighting. And, and so what they're, what they're doing to alleviate a lot of that, and not only, not only for online players, but for Overwatch League, uh, they, in, they instituted this thing called Roll Lock, um, where it is, uh, you are locked to two tanks, two attack, or two damage and two support. Hmm. Uh, and the way it works is back in the day, you would queue up for competitive. And if I join a match and I'm, I really only maybe feel comfortable playing as support, and I join a match and two supports are already selected, it's like, oh, fuck. And they're like, hey, uh, Maximum Cortez, can you play tank? I'm like, oh, fuck, not really, but OK. And you end up losing because you're not very good at that role or whatever. So now you queue up for just a tank. Or mm. just us damage, or just support. Oh, you can um, queue into matches that yeah, need it. You queue in only for those matches needed, and it tells you. Uh, and what it does is it gives you a competitive rating, your skill rating, uh, by role. So you have like a tank skill rating, you now have a, da a damage skill rating, and a support skill rating. Oh. Um, and so when you join up for these matches, you know, I selected there. support here, and there's only going to be one other person playing support, and these are all people that are comfortable in these roles. Uh, and I just think it's it's changed the game, not only for that, but also for Overwatch League, where Overwatch League kind of uh, the meta got really shitty, and there uh, every team was running three tanks and three supports, and it wasn't fun to watch. And the people who are super good at getting headshots with snipers yeah. and stuff like that, they were being relegated to, to not even being played. Because they weren't even they were on the bench because they only. Mm. Like, oh, those roles aren't needed. We're just playing three tanks. It's like, wow. It, the league got really, really, it looked, started to look like a MOBA. It just started to look like League or Dota, where it's just yeah. six people pushing into each other. And when one person dies, that team loses, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so now it's great for the league because snipers are back and headshots are back and players that can carry their teams are back now, where, oh, maybe it's like two of us left and four of them, but then I get three headshots and suddenly like, oh, well, you know, these exciting moments are back, and it's super, super exciting to like to f to be watching these teams again. When did they um, make these changes? Uh, yesterday. Oh, so wow. okay. it, it had been in Brand a uh, the two 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 had been in the the PTR the public test realm uh, for a couple months only on PC, and it finally hit uh, updated. It finally got updated everywhere yesterday, consoles and PC. Um, nice. And it's great. It's just like it's in my opinion, it's saving the game. It's uh, I made the joker earlier where they. Um, People were asking me about the NBA, how like the Warriors are being broken up, and how the NBA is like just a two-star team, a two-star league now. And it really feels like Overwatch, where it's like it's going to be exciting to watch again because we don't know what's going to happen. We will see these these superstar moments of like the guy playing Widow and Widowmaker, and he gets three big headshots, and it kind of turns the tides for the team. So it's really exciting. I'm so soaked for it. Hell yeah! Yeah, it's really. Who, cool. who have you been playing as? Uh, I main Zenyatta on uh, support. But uh, I've been playing, like, again, what's cool is, like, I can queue up as damage. And because what would normally happen, you would queue up and one person would pick support and there would be three damage players. I'm like, well, I wanted to play damage, but if I want our team to win, well, we I should support. probably move to yeah. support, right? And so that's that would happen all the time when I would play with me and a, a couple of people from the, in the kind of funny community. And uh, so it's great now that I know what I'm queuing up for and... 
And it's just it's just the best decision the game has made in a long time. And a lot of the pros are super happy about it too. And this is just for competitive uh, competitive, yeah. Has that support. Yeah. That's great. And when you uh just one point of clarity there, when you die, you normally can pick another character if you want, right? Does yeah, that, you could pick another character just within in, support. Within the support okay. role or damage role or tank role, yeah. Okay. So it's not like you're locked to that one character. It's just no, anywhere yeah, within the role you can unless still the other choose from. Unless the other player picks the character you just were or something. Right. That's the only thing you have to yeah. worry about. But even then, it's like fine. Like, but it's cool. It's support. great. It's like I think it's going to lessen a lot of toxic. I think the only toxicity you'll toxic. see now is like, oh, well, you're just bad at that player. Play another <laughs> character in that <laughs> game. You shouldn't be a As opposed role. to like, look, dude, I never play this fucking character. That's why we're doing bad right now. Like, I'm more comfortable with here. And like, it's going to just lessen a lot of like arguing on the internet. Nice. Cool. On the internet as a whole. On the internet as a whole. We wow. saw the internet the world with better this Overwatch <laughs> update. Somebody everybody. figured it out. I didn't know it was all Overwatch. Ice T's chilling now. Brian, <laughs> Rebel Galaxy Outlaw. Rebel Galaxy Outlaw. Two very Andy. similar words that are different, though. We found out. Thanks but, to the uh, developer for what? watching yeah. kind of funny games daily. On games daily, I, I, I mentioned this earlier, but I yeah. was talking shit because I was like, "How are you gonna have the words Rebel and Outlaw in your your title at the same time?" It just seems like a, little, a rebel versus. Like I know they're not outlaw. the exact same thing, but it's just like they're not the exact same thing. That's like calling someone pretty and beautiful. It's like, all right, you say something better. <laughs> I like that. But a rebel. I, like but but an I watch a Bachelor a every goddamn week, and the amount of times they're on a date and be like, you can't. You're beautiful. You're just so. <laughs> you're just so pretty, and you're like you're just. So, you're saying the same thing, you fucking. It's, it's like stuff. fighting. Ga- it's Dive like a little deeper. Fighting brawler battler. Right. Let's it's not take Tim too seriously on the name of the game. That reminds me of the Bo Burnham joke. You're incomparable, like a. Wait, what? <laughs> That's but, funny. But fighting and brawl <laughs> well, aren't the right, same, yeah. just like rebel and outlaw aren't the right, same. They're the not the heat same. Crazies are in full effect the last Either few way. days. <laughs> I'm not crazy. No, I'm right. A, he, she, okay. Crazy. No, I'm just saying that I, I don't care about that aspect. <laughs> so let's talk, I, I just want to talk so about, let's about the talk game. About the game. <laughs> What is this game, Fran? What's the game, Fran? Rebel Galaxy Outlaw. Um, apparently, it's so it's a prequel to a game that the this indie team. I say indie because it's a very small team, like five or six people, right? Is it Double Damage? What was the name of the? I forgot the name. I, I should have prepared. I'll look it, it up but, for you, Fran. But a very small team, um, and there was, you know, this has existed before. I think it was Rebel Outlaw. I think before or something. Now we're, now we're <laughs> or wait, no, it was just Rebel Galaxy. Anyway, I didn't mean to like comment on the previous one because I haven't really played that one, but I know that it exists and this is prequel story, um, but it is a sequel of development. So anyway, long story short, it's an epic store exclusive right now. So it was a little of how yeah, I stumbled onto damage. it. Yeah, double damage. Good. I'm glad I got that part right. And we're off to a great start. Um, <laughs> but it is on the epic store exclusively right now. Uh, it's 30 bucks, so 29.99 here in the States. And so, right, it's not like a full $60 game. I think that's worth noting at least in terms of Maybe the potential scope, but it is definitely inspired by games of your, you know, like Wing Commander, or just those space shoot 'em ups, right? Um, and it is all about upgrading your hunk of junk in this, you know, galaxy system to get something better. And there's a lot of games that have done this, even games obviously like FTL, which are very different, a little more like real time strategy type feeling. So it's not like that. You literally pretty much you uh, hop in. It's got this. Uh, I guess I would say almost expected. Um, it's a little cartoony space outlaw style, so it's not like hyper real or anything. Um, so they actually use their storyboard stuff to push forward some of the story stuff in the beginning. Um, and it also has just a killer soundtrack lineup. I think I heard. Now this is down the chain of what my chat told me. There was something like twenty four hours or something. Of they said on their music. website they 20. have over twenty hours over of music. Over twenty hours, good. Is the music like space western? <laughs> It's no, oh, it's very like Texas uh, rock and outlaw uh, indie rock. You know, it's a lot. It's a. When big you say an outlaw, swap. are you talking like like cowboy western? Cowboy western? Stuff, yeah. 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 Cowboy okay. Stuff. I thought this was interesting. On their site, there's a there's a, a an FAQ page, and there's a lot of funny questions. But the one question I want to point out is why should I play your game? And they say, if you don't think spaceships, biker gangs, decaying blue collar Americana, machine guns, and a complete disregard for accurate space physics go together, right. then there's probably not a good reason. And that last point, and there's probably, you know, the one that I'm moving towards, which is, I guess I would describe this as a space shooter with casual complexity. And what I mean by that is, 
it, it when you look at it, I think you look at the trailer and you see pew, 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 all these different trying Art to style looks cool. trying to chase uh, ships down and um, and get accuracy and use different guns. Like you, you probably think, man, I don't know. There's probably like a lot going on. Plus, I got to navigate space. There's a lot, you know, a lot of directions to worry about. A lot of places to go. Like No Man's Sky, I know people are very looking forward to. That is what much bigger in scope. This you pretty much like hop in. You're at a, a small uh, outpost space station, and you just talk to somebody in the bar kind of thing and pick up a mission and you go and the cool part about it so just to describe this casual complexity Bear, so you, you do hop in your ship trailer. very quick load times on the pc so you actually hop out whoosh, right into space and your target is always lit up in space so you just start looking around on your radar you're like, i'm going towards this yellow dot now the cool thing that they did that i really like is that you can press a on the yellow dot and it will fast travel you towards it mm. or you can actually hold the trigger and it will actually warp you through hyperspace. You can see how far you are away, like whatever, 40,000 meters or whatever it is. And you can choose two ways to travel. So you can actually get this feeling of hyper warping through space. And it doesn't take like a lifetime, but it might take 45 seconds, 60 seconds. Uh -huh. And sometimes things happen along the way. It's like, you know, you've noticed the distress signal. So it'll like stop you. And you can choose to like, oh, I'm just gonna do this little side mission. There's a bunch of uh, landmines and I need to shoot them down to help this cargo ship. Okay. And you're gonna get something from that. Now, part of the mechanics here, are, again, you start with this hunk of junk. The stuff you're seeing in the trailer is like, I wish you're I had this. You're way further ahead. The, yeah, 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 the ships are very expensive. So you're earning money. I mean, it's as simple as that. Yeah, you are a space cowboy uh, and you can choose to be an outlaw. You definitely can make some choices story-wise in terms of if you're carrying cargo and you want to piss the cops off, you can go down that path. Uh, there's there is apparently some wanted level, and I haven't gone down that road yet. Hmm. Um, so huh. it's got a little bit of that going on. But again, at the core, you literally just fly around and you go from point A to point B. And I'd actually stress that as the first thing. You don't always have to be shooting stuff. What happens when you're not in ship form? When you're not in the ship? So you're literally just like woman there. at an outpost, and it's all um, very. I would say it's very PC in the sense where there's a menu at the bottom of which room in the outpost you're going to. So if you go to the bar, it's like a, it's a loading screen, and then you're in the bar, and you're just like talking to someone. So you're not walking around as okay. the character. You're either in the ship or you're in a static screen you know or well it's not static but there's you're standing still yourself anyway and you're but are you having dialogue that you're selecting with there's a little a little bit of well actually no the conversations you have in the outpost right now tend to just be hey i'd like to sign up for the mercenaries guild and they're like so here's the information on it. you page through it and it's just a tree of dialogue that you go through in space however you can pull up the stuff and so let's say you get into a shootout with some mercenaries it does give you an opportunity you can select like three things like you know get the hell out of here, or you can be like, whoa, whoa, I think we can talk this out. So they give you, a, I would say it's light dialogue, but it does have some decision making. I did effectively, as an example, I was able to talk my way out of like getting shot up. Um, just by taking that time, it's optional, right? Like the, the dialogue doesn't come up. I hit the menu button and I was like, whoa, 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 I'm going to die, but I knew I was gonna <laughs> die. I was not upgraded at this point. And I was like, I haven't tried this yet. And I said, whoa, sorry, can we talk it out? And they're like, all right, yeah, we don't have to get into this. And they flew off. I was like, thank goodness, because otherwise, it would have set me back just like a little bit. Yeah. So again, it's casual complex in the sense that don't overthink it, you jump in, and it's really cool that I got confused at first because the buttons are so fast, like the B button, I'm used to backing out to say, I wanna go back to the launch bay, which is the menu, that's the top tree of it, right? And if you press it too, too often, they actually designed it as if you back out, you you go into space like pretty immediately. So if you watched the beginning of my stream yesterday, I was trying to load in and I'd get to the dock because I didn't know how to play and there was no tutorial, which I actually like. But I accidentally would tap B and it very quickly would throw me back into space. I was like, oh crap, I'm trying to just land. And um, Anyway, the point is you grab a mission and there's random missions. I think they had a big list of stuff and you get different amounts of credits for those missions. Uh, there's also like the level of difficulty that you're playing at. So you, it, it rates like, is this gonna be difficult? Is it easy? So for lack of a better way to put it, you kind of grind out your greens. Those are easy missions to start, go deliver some cargo. Um, but it's got some nice details. Again, for a, 30, awesome. for a thirty dollar, what I it is an indie game. I define indie as a small studio. It's a five you know, person. No matter team how game. long you worked on it, it's a small studio, more limited budgets, etc. And um, 
So there's a lot in the game. They even have a commodity system. So you'll go to space stations and like, they'll be selling diamonds and it's a little like the stock market. You only have so much room in your ship, so you gotta carry this stuff. And cargo's one of these things you upgrade, but you can buy like diamonds. You might be like, wait, the market price is more. Yeah. And I think I, you don't know where it's more, but you're like, I think this other space station happened. You can take that moment to fly around and try to find the other space station to buy it, to sell it for more. Sure. So it's pretty cool. My one mm. question for you, and I don't know how much <laughs> Throw uh, eyesight you have on or how much you've played the other one. Would you pick this over No Man's Sky, especially with Beyond coming out this week? I haven't played No Man's Sky, and I'm going okay. to. Okay. I've been waiting to play it, honestly, because I know it's a very deep game, and I think that's the only thing I can say having observed. like This looks uh, way more all... combat-focused, more dogfighty. Yeah, like, it's you got don't... a different vibe going for it, mm -hmm. except that you are in space, you are running. No exactly. Man's Sky has the exact same thing you're talking about, a scarcity of... You know, you you can bring uranium over here, but you right. can sell it for more. This over is there. much more narrow, right? In the sense that, like, you're not exploring a vast, yeah. ever expanding space. Like, there's a lot of places to go, but it's a lot of go to point A to go to point B. And they again, they make it simple. You you go into space, and you very quickly can just warp to your next spot. There's no landing. You get over there, and you'll either shoot somebody up or you'll pick up some cargo. And it's pretty straightforward in that sense. But you start to get into this grind of like, oh, like for example, it costs a thousand credits to join the merchant. Merc mercenary skill, there's two of them. Um, so you look at that and you're like, I only have 5,000 credits, I'm early in the game. And I just sort of had that sense that I've played games like this. I'm like, I should buy this. They don't really describe, but I'm gonna get more missions. And I did it, I was like, oh my God, there's so many good missions in here that I can earn a lot more money. So it's a lot about, I would say that above all, you've got this ship, it's a hunk of junk, and that's what you start with. And you start, you're like, I just need some shields, man. I just need to get these lasers. I need to get these heat seeking missiles because I want to go destroy these ships, which are destroying me. And it definitely punishes you. You don't, I, at least I did not have the experience where I flew out into space, got in a fight, and I was like, woo, let's go. I was like, crap, this ship <laughs> sucks. And I realized, like, I can't be getting into fights, and it does a really good job of that progression. It is, I'm a huge Metroid fan, right? And so it's that stripped down feeling of like, I've got nothing, and I've gotta build it up before I take on anything big. So I found cool. it very enjoyable. I actually thought it would make a perfect Switch game, you know, on that topic of uh, which platform should it be on, because I would love to take this with me. It's going know. to be. Yeah, I, I know. So okay, it's sure. coming to other platforms, and Switch, they're working on something, too. We Switch don't and PS4 day. is what they said. They yeah, said eventually coming to consoles, they're working on it, and that a, yeah. a year from now it'll be on Steam and other... Ah, so it's exclusive in the Epic Store, Epic store right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, yeah, full disclosure, right? It was a provided copy in the sense that I'm part of the Epic Creator program, so it just was sitting there. I can install games for free sometimes as part of the program. Um, but if you decide to pick it up, I'm on the Epic Store as a creator, so you can use my code if you decide to pick it up. But, um, you know, and that's the grain of salt with am I biased because if you buy it, I might make some money from it. But no, I genuinely really enjoy it. Um, I thought I was just gonna play it for like an hour and check it out and talk about it on the show. And maybe Got that's the best way to in. end this is I totally was like, I, all right, I'm not playing Destiny right now. I'm just gonna keep wow. it. Yeah, I'm just gonna grind the this Destiny out. Destiny killer. Whoa. I mean, we don't have a lot to do in Destiny right now other than grind out so just some vanity items. So We don't have a lot to do. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot to do. We have a do. grocery list of shit to do right but now But for like a set of armor, they, you probably will never The most use. beautiful glowy set of armor you've ever had. Let's let's do the Destiny conversation, but can we keep it to before you jump. two minutes or less? Well, before you jump to that, I just want to close it out here. I did look it up. Outlaw. Noun. A person <laughs> who has broken the law, especially one who remains at large or is a fugitive. Rebel. Fugitive. Wilson. Is an Australian actress, <laughs> writer, and producer. <laughs> See, same thing. I told no, you. No, they're different. Insane. <laughs> they're different Insane. people. Insane. I'm not saying they're the exact same thing. I'm saying that they are very, very Just similar. Just shush and let them talk about Destiny words. for two minutes. Put two minutes on the, on the clock. clock. Two minutes. Do we really want to talk about it? The only thing I would like to mention is that they had a stream today. The crew yes. at Bungie. It had a really cool vibe. Very down to earth. Very relaxed. Where they went through some gameplay showcasing how Armor 2.0 is, is going to work. And it's really exciting for people who have dumped as many hours into Destiny as people like Fran and I, or potentially more. In fact, a lot more. more. Um, and because it adds a layer of complexity that I think people who are playing Destiny every day or every week really were yearning for. Something to, to chase. And I think that they, so far, it's really exciting. It's gonna be, in my mind, the first thing I thought was, is like, oh man, this is a lot more busy work. Armor 2.0? Yeah, but that being said, I haven't gotten to experiment it with it myself and actually see the effects in combat and see how this new mod system that they're adding to all of the gear is actually going to manifest itself out in the field. 
Yeah. The thing I would just note with the little time we have left is if you are thinking of getting back into Destiny and you hear about all these things changing, and again, grain of salt because we haven't played this, played this yet, but I do see what they're doing. Um, Tim was talking about getting a piece of armor and you're like, crap, if I shred it, what are the materials and uh, do what uh, perks does it have? It's actually more about the perks, so without getting too deep into it, but the perks now on your armor will actually just be like mods that you acquire permanently. They are not consumable anymore. This is the big change. So what I'm excited about is once you get this sweet perk on a helmet and maybe you don't know much about it, um, I assume, well, actually perks come from certain areas, but the point is you keep it and all you do is slot your armor now. You don't have to like go chasing to get all these different types of armor that might have your drop, which in Destiny became very overwhelming for a lot of people. You're like, I I'm not even gonna worry about my armor. Like I, I just like the way I look. Yeah. And they're focusing a lot more on you still get all those perks and more, but the way you look, you can now look awesome and not feel like this pressure to you know, save all this armor and figure it out. It's honestly been overwhelming. It was a point. It was to a point where you would get the the same drop of a gun, like let's say a pulse rifle that had a different set of perks, and you you kept chasing this god roll uh, for, of the RNG system of the same pulse rifle because you're like, I like that yeah. gun, but it doesn't have the perks I want, and so you could have up to like seven or eight of the same well, gun with different perks in your. But see, guns you still will remember. I had the same thing where I was like, ooh. But weapons aren't changing that Dif we know of. Different types of guns, sure, that's different. But what but I'm armors, saying, I'm saying about like the same. Two minutes is up. The same thing. It's been two and a half. The point is, you would chase a bunch of armor, enough. and now it, just check it out. Actually, check out Bungie's Twitter feed. They did a good job of some quick compartmentalized videos, and probably a good way to look at it until further notice. Now, Barrett, I sent you a link from the Reddit. God I want you to throw up. Damn it! I want to. I want. I know it's hard for you to do your fucking job and look at the screens. Fuck. Just God look at the screen. Look at the screen. Uh. This one cracked me up. It's. <laughs> Wait, what, what did you? Uh, where'd I go? I saw when Fran. When, when you're 25 minutes into Fran talking about a live <laughs> service game and it's Charles Barkley falls asleep. Now, I, of course, we're all guilty of this. As I rant and rave, but I remember I DC? did like 45. Well, right. DC for sure, but I did 45 minutes on some other game. Oh, it was, was Marvel. Uh, yeah, I was super into was the minutiation shit. It's and we all do it. There's I just no thought it was funny. Everyone, the, that's the problem yeah. with video games at this point, where it's like these, especially with service games. Which at this point, what game's not a service game it, to some extent? And it's like the games we're playing, we're going to talk about them. I'm not yeah, saying stop. I, but I'm not saying be less yeah, like Tim did it with Astral Change today. I thought it was great. The, the what I would say to the audience and bear in mind, we rely on each other to at the right times interrupt each other um, and and ask an, an, a question, right? Not take over the conversation. We don't want to do that, but that's the goal. Meaning, I, when I go off on one of these live service games, I'm waiting for one of these to be like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like we have this question, and that's what we rely on each other for. So when they don't, it means that they think that you're doing a good job. So well, when we do interrupt, we think you're doing a good job. That's not the yeah. Different. But the point is, as as hosts, right? It's we look to each other to ask the pertinent questions when we're going deep on stuff. So the, when as an audience, sometimes we'll talk forever on a topic. But that means you're all at the table being like, sounds good. Yeah. But oh, yeah. I, I would, at least that's what I would say. I'd look to you guys and be like, that's enough. We get it. We're going to move on, you know, and like, yeah. whatever. All right, friend. That's enough about this topic. We get it. Let's that's right. Ah, and Barry, no you don't Batman, know, you're not a host Arkham. of the show. Oh! So. I I don't, I don't get wait a second. Are you both, you're both hosting kind of funny games. Not anymore, Greg. Not anymore. Greg Miller. Yeah. Topic of the show. Sega Genesis. It's Mini. back, baby. Sega Genesis in smaller Mini's form. Oh it's back. Only in small, it. tiny well, it's form. It's heavy. It is heavy. It's the here. Genesis. Can I open this? Yeah, go. This is our official unboxing for the Sega Genesis Mini, of course. Today, on its 30th anniversary. Wow. 814. Can you it's believe actually it? today? Oh, August that's, 14, that's 1989. Awesome. Uh, is when it Look came out in North America. Fat in Sonic. North America. I miss him. Everybody come around. Okay. That's Sonic and Fat Pikachu. Oh, we got a plug. All right, cool. Very interesting. Very interesting. Great. I'm going to give you some fact sheet stuff. You ready? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, of course, this is coming out officially uh, very, very soon. Uh, it's going to be seventy nine ninety nine. Uh, it comes with forty two games, two replica three button USB Genesis controllers with six foot cables. The worst one. controller ever made. I'm sorry. What was that? Now? <laughs> no, it's true. Yeah, I remember. I mean, you, you got the man. thin one, and then you got the with the six buttons, the yeah, whatever yeah, they call yeah, it yeah. at the time, whatever. HDMI. Uh, one Ooh, USB to bigger. micro B power cable, one power adapter, North American only. Uh, one HDMI cable. Um, what's the actual release date? 42 games. I already said that, right? September mm -hmm. 19th, 2019 in the U.S. Uh, October 4th in Europe, Africa, and the Middle East. September 19th, you said? That's what I said, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Kevin's mom's birthday. A few days after Borderlands, I think. Fire Genesis. <laughs> yeah, September 13th is Borderlands. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you ever want to play Echo the Dolphin, you could. Yeah. Look at it, look at oh, how cute it's it is. so mini. So I small. It. I love it so much. Uh, I'll, I'll wow, give you a it is... What would you say that's the size of, like... 
personal well, here's pan my iPhone square pizza. XS. Oh my god, it's it's almost wow. It's like maybe twenty percent bigger than so see. an iPhone XS with a case. It's approximately fifty five percent of the Model One size. Andrew. Yeah. Wow. It's the size of a face. Pretty, I mean, it's a good line of Face-sized. games, too. It's very tiny. This. Much yeah. smaller than I was the, expecting. The controllers that or the heavy part, Bother I think. Me, yeah. Well, here's the thing. Genesis, I know it gets a lot of shit. But does it? it does have... Yeah, it definitely. Okay. Right? I don't know. Yeah, it does. I, lo- I have a Sega kid. I'm not sure any but, I mean, like, real... Like, how many games do you love on the Sega Genesis? Ah. Uh... <laughs> That's what it's like. I don't think that anybody would argue that it's the Genesis is... It's all time. Or even compared to love. Super Nintendo at the there's point, right? So. No, yeah, I'm not gonna uh, but there's some, there is some good stuff. Yeah, it's just Road like looking at the controller, it's need. like... Road Rash 2. Streets of Rage 2. Yeah? I'm ready to roll. Dude, you got Toe Jam and Earl. Yeah. You, got you got Streets of Rage. Sonic games. You got Mean Bean Machine. Streets of Rage 2. Shinobi 3. Hell yeah, Shinobi's back. Earthworm Castle Jin. Illusion. What? Earthworm Jin? Contra Jim? Hard Corps. Okay. No, yeah, Castle Contra Hard Corps. Best Contra. Golden Axe. I mean, come on. Walk yeah, on, Shining. Walk there's, on. there's good stuff. Wait, Fran, is it Earthworm Jim or Earthworm Jim 2? It's just Earthworm Jim, I think, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. It's up here. Okay. Yep, just one. Just just the first one. Okay. Kid Chameleon's mm-hmm. on here, which is a favorite yeah. one. Gunstar Heroes. Got Fantastic it on my birthday. Game. I remember anyway, playing it in my house I mean, with friends before going to leaps and bounds. How much was this again? I do remember. Uh, seventy nine ninety nine. That's what I said. Yeah, see, that's yes. seventy nine ninety nine. Seventy nine. That's the question, though. Do you want an M two uh, handle all the ports? I assume that's yeah. fantastic. M two do such a great job. They did with Sega Ages games. and Sega three D Classics collection. Yeah. yeah, which are well. That's the question. Does it? Does everything port and run well? Emulate sure. well. If it does, and you would if M two did it, does, it, it yeah. does. Which is that's the reason you might be interested in going down this road. Other than also, I'm the nostalgia just because it's cool. I love these little. I almost spilled water on it. <laughs> Don't spill water on a frame. Yeah, yeah. Get it away from you me. You know, as somebody who grew up with the Genesis, right? I remember Genesis for me, uh, my memory obviously is I'm a Sega Master System kid. Uh, got it, you know, when I saw Ghostbusters on it. Was able to get it yeah. for uh, my birthday the next time around. And then in first grade, had a good report card. And they Ooh, said, what do you yeah. want? And I was like, I want a Genesis. Because I, I was locked in. I'm not deviating from this path at all. And got my Genesis. And then, you know, I was off to the races, obviously, with Sonic with uh, Spider-Man over on the wall. Yeah. Uh, t- yeah, Golden Axe, Streets of Rage, yeah, my uh, f- Road Rash. Golden Axe. My I'm super excited to play Road Rash. It was like Genesis. Genesis for me was Sonic and Echo the Dolphin, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I know Sonic 3. I was a Nintendo kid. Which is such a bummer. What I get I, it. It's the weird licensing and all that stuff. But what, it sucks I, what was the Sonic license 3. for Sonic 3? Sonic 3 just has a lot of issues with music because okay. Michael Jackson may or may not have composed oh. some of the music, may or may not have stolen oh, yeah. things. There's like hmm. there's a lot of layers with Sonic 3. Fantasy Star 4 as well. Um, and it sucks because Sonic 3 is a legitimately great game yeah. that you know everybody shits on Sonic, but... Two and three are yeah, very man. good. Street Fighter Two Special Champion Edition with the two controllers. That's pretty good right there. Yeah, no MK2. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that was the big thing that I remember most was because I didn't have Genesis. My friends did, um, but it supported, you know, blood and Mortal Kombat. Yeah, and of course. Yeah. I still remember, I think the blood code, it was like Abacab or something. A-B-B-A-C-A-B maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I always, re- Abacab, it, we'll have to look there it up. There you go. Like was there say- anything cooler than Vector Man? <laughs> Cause I don't think so. Nah, man. That Me was, when I was fucking eight years old at Toys R Us, and that would be like the demo game, and I'm like, this is the future. The man. future's here. It looked like that was their attempt at looking at Donkey Kong Country and being like, no, 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 we're gonna do something neat, like cool. You, you guys ain't seen nothing. Oh yet. yeah, we got gotcha. you. They nailed it. Wait, though. what was it? It was a. It's A B A C A B B. I mixed it up with A B B A, but A B A B C A B A B A C A B B. The cheat code for blood nonsense fatality in Mortal Kombat on the Genesis. Yeah. Remember it to this day, man. Almost. <laughs> Licensing sucks. It does, man. If they could have Spider Man on this, you fucking yeah, kidding it'd me? It'd be great. Because, yeah, 40 games. I mean, that's you a ton of games. You say it sucks until it's your IP somebody's licensing, and then you'll be like, licensing is the best. I can't believe I ever thought this sucked. True. But yeah. it's like, if you're going to do it, these nostalgia things, it's like people are nostalgic for a reason. And I feel like they, they nailed licensing stuff with Mickey there. Yep. It gets into. Uh, I don't even know. Actually, I don't even want to. Yeah, I'm not I'm even, even going to f- hazard a guess as to why this would be so tough now. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's it's kind of cool. But now it's a that trip just to person. have a little Genesis. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, even haven't, the, even I, haven't, the I haven't held a real Genesis in so long, let alone had one like this with all the sliders yeah. and the buttons and the stupid ass headphone jack they had on the front of it. Just that <laughs> little slot move at all guys, for the cartridge. It, yeah. Yeah. Does? Oh, How cool. do you guys think this is going to do compared to the other classic mini things that we've gotten? Better than PlayStation, not as good as Nintendo. Yep. Yeah, it's not, right. it's not going to do as well yeah. as the Nintendo. The PlayStation 1 was just... Overpriced. D- totally overpriced, and its library was not up to par. Garbage. And, and 20 games was just not enough. Like At least this is like... There's I, a couple I, of missions here, but... 
for the most part, this is the Sega Genesis collection. Yeah, I think it has to be old enough too to warrant it. Like I, it, like meaning it's a weird communication that like I mean, with PlayStation, like why isn't it just release that stuff on PlayStation Four? Like why are you selling me this other thing? Whereas cool. this, and I know you could say the same with Nintendo, but it just feels different to me. It's old enough, thirty years, um, and that's part of what you're getting is this package with the the style of the controllers and all that stuff. It's not. I, I guess I just I've seen these in like Bed Bath and Beyond. Yeah. But you haven't. That's the key though. Right? It's, it's the M2 emulation though. Right. Like, that's what makes this thing actually. Yeah, you've seen like the right, but that, I think that that's the <laughs> part versions. that's going to be difficult to convey Sell. to consumers who aren't actively looking at gaming marketing material, right? I mean, I think the hardest part is going to be getting people excited about the Genesis in general. Like, I, I don't think that there's like a overall fond look back at the Genesis of like, man, can't wait to play these games in the same way that they can release Mario World 10 more times and people are going to buy it. Oh man, you know? And that's the thing is like, you know, when you think of the Nintendo consoles, right? I feel like so many, like we, you know, it's obviously proof is in the pudding and everybody knows it, but like Nintendo games sell Nintendo consoles. Whereas like when we start getting, stretching our legs more, it starts to become, in PlayStation more, it starts to become, well, man, I really miss this thing, but I know it's third party and I yeah. know it had a license and I know yada, 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 yada. Yeah, and also like, it's like the jigs up on these. Uh -huh. where it's like, you know, NES was like, what the fuck? That's awesome. And then I hope they asked me, oh my God, they did NES. And I was like, all right, cool. And here's, and okay, well, you, everyone else can stop. Like, yeah, we don't need. Commodore 64. We don't need All right, Turbo Graphics. Yeah, exactly. You can stop. Stop what you're doing. Don't yeah. do that. Like, It's still cool, but yeah, we're going to hit a point where it's like, I'm still excited to see how they do Game Boy. I feel like they will at some point, but I just don't know what that would look like. But it'll look like this. Oh my it's God. You know what I mean? Damn, you figured it out, Greg. Figured it out. <laughs> Pretty stoked about it. Is there any game that you're, besides Spider Man, that you're upset's not part of this? Spider, I mean, for me personally, Spider Man's such the one. Yeah. You know what I mean? From a more historical outlook, or at least looking back at like what the Genesis. It's also the thing that the Genesis collection, again, to Fran's point, right? Of like that has been put out so many times and, and is a great platinum trophy. Uh, <laughs> like covered the bases so well as well. It's just I don't. What? I mean, yeah, you talked about it earlier with Mortal Kombat, right? Yeah. Like that, okay, sure, that was a great one, Sega one. I mean, NHL 94, like, remember, the Sega sports games are always so great. Yeah, right? that's or true. the sports games on Sega were so great. Uh, but yeah, it's the exact same situation we're talking about in terms of licensing, who's got that, how you get the rights from that person. Yeah. These people signed their, you know, likenesses away thinking it would be one game, and in a year, nobody would care. Here we are. Here we All are. Years buying later. mini versions of them. Give me a mini Joe Montana frame. What? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Kind of Funny Games cast. Thank you very much for joining us. We will be back next week. Uh, but until then, we're going to talk to the post show. Patreon supporters, get hyped. <laughs>